This week, the City of New York, the AACC, and the AACC sections from the Northeast will play host to thousands of laboratory scientists from clinical laboratories and the diagnostics industry. Accordingly, we would like to pay a brief tribute to some of the individuals and companies that have worked in the Northeast to bring about the growth, the value, and the role of clinical chemistry as we know it today. There are many individuals who have influenced our profession and have spent key parts of their careers in the Northeast. However, it is only fitting that we commence our tribute with Otto Follen, a Swedish immigrant who is regarded by many as the father of clinical chemistry in the United States. Follen spent a significant period of his career in Waverly, Massachusetts and completed much of his pioneer work on assay methods for creatinine and glucose during the period 1900 to 1907. It was during this period that he worked with Cien Wu, who had come to the United States from Peking, China. Together, they worked to create the legendary Folin Wu method, which they published in 1919. The first two decades of the century was a time when it was important to develop reagents for the new and emerging assays. Another Northeasterner, Stanley Benedict, joined this activity and developed his famous reagent for glucose assay in 1931. However, in 1920, another giant had arrived on the scene of laboratory medicine in New York, Donald Van Slyke. Working here at the Rockefeller Institute, Van Slyke established the basis of blood gas measurement as we know it today. For the next 50 years, his creative genius in creating apparatus to measure blood gases was equaled by his clinical studies that established their application in diagnosis. During the 1930s and 40s, the status of the clinical biochemist grew, and immediately after the Second World War, William F. Sunderman Sr. of Philadelphia brought the emerging profession down to earth with his survey of laboratories that exposes the real quality of analytical work in medicine. This work of this quiet, accomplished scientist and musician laid the groundwork for future improvement and practice. Within a year, the energetic Harry Sabatka of Mount Sinai Hospital here in New York urged eight other local clinical laboratory scientists, including Miriam Reiner, also of Mount Sinai, to establish the American Association of Clinical Chemists. The name they chose was influenced by a recently published book by J.P. Peters and Donald Van Slyke, entitled Qualitative Clinical Chemistry. Little did these nine individuals realize what they had created, and it is hardly likely that they would have envisaged a 10,000-member association with a $10 million annual revenue within the next 45 years. Several of these pioneering individuals went on to become presidents of the AACC. Within a short time, several other clinical chemists have been persuaded to create similar groups elsewhere in the Northeast. These include John Reinhold from the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia and Joseph Bonatti of Boston. One of the original New York Nine was another scientist born and bred in Brooklyn, Samuel Nadelson. Dr. Nadelson had spent much of the 1930s working at Jewish Hospital Brooklyn where he worked on assays for cholesterol. However, he spent much of the next 40 years introducing new technology, such as X-ray spectrometry and the microgasometer into the clinical laboratory and developing methods for application to neonatal investigation. The 1950s saw the development of enzymology in the clinical laboratory, and Felix Rablewski, working at Memorial Sloan Kettering here in New York, published key information on the role of the enzyme, SGOT, and lactic dehydrogenase, LDH, as diagnostic aids. However, another breakthrough in science also came in the 1950s, 1959 to be exact, when Solomon Burson and Rosalind Yalow introduced the technique that would revolutionize assays for hormones and drugs, namely radioimmunoassay. Now we're able to measure substances present in minute quantities in blood, urine, and tissue. Their pioneering work will bring a Nobel Prize to New York for Dr. Yellow, 
and the admiration of the entire clinical chemistry community. The next two decades of the 50s and 60s see contributions to clinical chemistry from numerous individuals from the Northeast. In the field of blood lipid assays, we saw Abel and Kendall introduce a major breakthrough with their cholesterol assay in 1953. Sidney Udenfriend introduced significant applications of fluorimetry into the clinical laboratory, while at Norwalk, Connecticut, the Yale professor Roy Barnett was active in ensuring that the quality of clinical laboratory work was understood and that appropriate statistical tools were applied to the interpretation of QC data. During the same period, another Yale professor, David Seligson, and a future president of AACC, was actively exploring the use of computers in the clinical laboratory, a role he was to play until his retirement in 1984. Elsewhere in the Northeast, other new clinical chemists were making their mark. Victor Herbert introduced new methods for vitamin B12. Joseph Bonatti, the early pioneer of the 50s and founder of the Northeast section, was investigating flame photometry and an exciting new thyroid function assay, protein-bound iodine. By now, the field was well established and the importance of textbooks for education and training was realized. This mission was well served by Joseph Anino, who used his lifetime of experience as a clinical chemist in Boston to produce four editions of a classic textbook, Clinical Chemistry, Principles and Procedures. By 1960, the emergence of clinical enzymology was apparent, and none did more to herald its exciting future than New York's own Arthur Carman. His pioneer efforts in establishing the role of enzymes in diagnosis of myocardial infarction became legendary. Elsewhere in New York, other workers such as Oscar Badansky at Memorial Sloan Kettering worked to improve the diagnostic role of phosphatase enzymes. At the same time, we saw a change in clinical laboratory practice that was to affect laboratories all over the world. The introduction of automated chemistry in the clinical laboratory by Leonard Skeggs and the Technicon Corporation under the guidance of Edwin C. Whitehead created an increase in testing that was unimaginable only a few years before. However, another innovation was now introduced by Hans Hansen, who developed the first assay for a glycoprotein tumor marker. This activity would grow to become a major industry within a few years. At the same time, a clinical chemist from the University of Buffalo, New York, Max Chilcott, was busily demonstrating the role of clinical chemistry in public health. His contributions to the profession in this way and his guidance of many young clinical chemists and pathologists made him a worthy recipient of several awards. The tremendous impact made by a diagnostic company was quickly compounded by new and exciting methods, reagents, and instrumentation from a group of northeastern companies, including Corning, who brought us flame photometry. Waters introduced high-pressure liquid chromatography, instrumentation laboratories, more flame photometry, and Perkin Elmer introduced an impressive range of gas chromatographic devices. However, during this period of great influence by the new diagnostic companies, there was still a role to play by individuals, and none played greater roles in changing practice and philosophy than Arthur Babson, working on method and reagent improvement with general diagnostics, while Raymond Gambino worked to establish clear understanding of normality.